know your IS code provisions short lecture series. In this short lecture, I will explain about simplified method for dynamic analysis. So this simplified method is used when structure is regular in plan and in elevation. So that means what, so there are no irregularities present in the structure. Mass is distributed evenly and uh, stiffness is also distributed evenly. So in such cases, so this kind of uh, analysis method can be used, but it does not indicate that building will predominantly uh, deflect in shear mode only. That is one point. And uh, there's another assumption that uh, building that is uh, frame members will not have axial deformation and also beams will not have axial rotations. So these are the, these are the assumptions which are uh, taken into consideration in this uh, uh, method. So let's go into the details. Yeah, so clause number 7.7.5.4 simplified method for dynamic analysis of building. So there are like uh, two methods of analysis. One is equivalent static method <clears throat> and second one is dynamic method. Now in dynamic method also we have two, one is response spectrum uh, method and second one is time history method. And this uh, method that is, uh, this method is in addition to that, that is simplified method for dynamic analysis of building. So what clause says is regular buildings may be analyzed as a system of masses lumped at the floor levels with each mass having one degree of freedom, that of lateral displacement in the direction under, the, under consideration. So that means a regular building where all the floor mass is lumped at one place and uh, half of the mass present in the next floor and half of the mass present in the uh, below floor and above floor they are also lumped because of the lateral direction, shaking in lateral direction, so it can be lumped. So something like this, one second. Yeah, something like this. So here, W1, so seismic weight at uh, say first floor is entire uh, weight of the first floor and half of the weight of uh, say columns, walls in the second floor and half of the weight of columns and walls in the first floor. So they are all lumped at first floor. Similarly in second floor, and in third floor, in third floor, since there is no above, uh, that is that the terrace is there here. So slab weight, beam weight, and half of the column and uh, wall weight in the third floor itself. So this is lumped mass idealization. So this, if say analysis we do in uh, like in this such kind of idealization, then the following expressions shall hold uh, good in the computation of various quantities. So what are the quantities we need? So we need like modal mass, modal participation factor, mode participation factor, design lateral force at each uh, mode, at each floor in each mode, and story share in each mode, story share force due to all modes considered, and lateral forces at each uh, story due to all modes considered. So these are the uh, parameters which are required uh, for design. Now let's go into the details of say modal mass. So modal mass, which is MK, that is K is the kth mode. So modal mass MK of mode K is given by this expression. That is M suffix K, uh, that in numerator WI phi IK. So phi is the mode coefficient, mode shape coefficient, ith mode, kth level, sorry, ith level, kth mode. So wi, uh, phi i, k is whole square, summation of it and whole square divided by g, uh, summation i from one to n, n number of uh, floors, wi, phi i, k, phi i, k square. So where g is the acceleration due to gravity and phi i, k is mode shape coefficient that is ith floor in kth mode. So WI is seismic weight of floor I and N is the number of floors. So simply in this expression, we can plug in and then get these. So these are the mode shapes. So three story building, this is a lumped mass idealization. First mode, uh, something looks like this, second mode and third mode. So whichever modal mass we want, so we 
put that number here, say M1. So here W1511 whole square plus again W2. So I is one, two, three like that. So W2 here, I'll plug in all the values and get the modal mass. That is the first parameter. Then let's go to the second parameter. Second parameter is that is mode modal participation factor. So modal participation factor is P K that is K is mode, mode shape, mode, mode number. So P K is equal to summation from I to I is equal to one to N again here again floors. So W I weight of that floor phi I K. So I at the level K at the mode and denominator also W I phi I K square. So here uh, C numerator one doesn't have square and denominator one that's uh, mode shape coefficient has square in it. So phi L I K mode shape coefficient at ith floor in mode K and W I is seismic weight of floor I N is number of floors. Yeah, again, same like previous uh, slide. So this is mode participation factor. So that means how much this mode is participating in the entire uh, number of n number of uh, floors. So there are like conditions that first three modes should uh, contribute 65%. Uh, uh, so this is a P1, P2, P3, if we add, then that should contribute more than 65%. Yeah. Then the third one is design lateral force at each floor in each mode. So this is mode wise design lateral force. So Q is a design lateral force, Q I K, I at the level and K at the mode. So A K is a coefficient and phi I K, phi I K is the uh, mode shape coefficient. P is the participation factor, that mode participation factor and W I is that level weight. So if we look at this one, A K is the design horizontal acceleration spectrum value. So how do we get this design acceleration uh, spectrum value? So for this mode, that K, so omega K, we need to, the frequency of that mode, uh, we need to find out, convert that into natural period. And then that natural period, you uh, check the SA by G value, that is the uh, acceleration coefficient in that. Yeah, you can see. So first mode, second mode, third mode. So this, this is for uh, getting this uh, mode shape coefficient that is phi i k. So here i is the superscript, k is the, this, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, superscript is a mode, mode, uh, number, mode number and the subscript is the level. Yeah, so let's look at say, we need to find out, we want to find out. So design lateral force at each floor in each mode. So in first mode, we want to find out find out Q at level two, that means uh, second floor level. So how do we get that? You can see here, Q21 is equal to A1. So this is first mode. So uh, quotient, design horizontal quotient related to first mode. That means we, have to, we need to take T1 and then get the value of SA by G uh, from the design spectrum graph. And then that is A, A1 and uh, phi two one. So first mode, second level, second floor level, P1. So this is modal participation factor and W2, that is weight of the W2 level. So that's how we get a design lateral force at each uh, floor level in each mode. So if we get that for all the modes, then we can add and we get the, at that level, uh, combined, combined one, all, all, all floors, sorry, all modes. So story share force in each mode again. So V I K, this summation from J I plus one to N uh, Q I I K. So this is just a cantilever kind of uh, uh, what do you call analogy. So this is the force forces. So in the earlier uh, uh, slide, we uh, discussed how to calculate this Q one one, Q two one and Q three one. So simply we take this Q that V three one is equal to this Q three one. V21 is equal to Q this plus this, both, both these levels, third plus second. And then V11 will be Q31 plus Q21 plus Q11, that's all. Like that. Then coming to story 
shear force due to all modes considered. So if we consider all three, all modes, so peak story shear force VI in story I due to all modes considered shall be obtained by combining those due to each mode in accordance with the 7.7.5.3. So we add up all, the, all those values. Okay. So this V1, V2, V3. So V1 is 3. then lateral force at each story due to all modes considered. So design lateral forces, F roof at roof level and Fi at level of floor I shall be obtained as, so how do we get it? V, whatever is the lateral force at roof, it will be that only, but at any floor we want, then uh, shear force at, uh, uh, that is the difference between the shear force at two levels, I, Ith level and I plus one level. So if we, a uh, take a difference between those two that then we get that story level. So lateral forces at all uh, at each story due to all modes considered. Yeah, like that. Okay, you can see here F3 is equal to V3, F2 is equal to V2 minus V3 and F1 is equal to V1 minus V2. So that's how it is. So the intention of this short lecture is to help students and practice engineers to understand IS code provisions in a better manner. So following references have been used in the preparation of these slides. Thank you.